Hallelujah. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing us to be here today. This is the English version of uh, the church service of Walk by Faith International Missionary Church. Uh, in the service, in the program today, we're going to have a uh, children ministry in the mighty name of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. This is the web streaming version of the church service due to the COVID-19, the coronavirus. You know, today uh, in this society, the coronavirus episode is very popular. It's very popular. It's global. The entire universe is talking about uh, the coronavirus. There is not a single country in the world that does not talk about the coronavirus. Everyone talking about the coronavirus, making it uh, the most popular topics, well, the most popular topic in the United States today. The coronavirus, uh, it's not only a virus, but uh, it affects every part of uh, human's life today. It affects family, it affects uh, workplace, it affects government, it affects uh, lifestyle, it affects our health, it affects everything. You cannot name anything that, uh, that uh, the coronavirus does not affect. Your e economy, it, e it even affecting the church. So that's why right now we're doing a church service specifically via the internet, Spe specifically uh, focused on the internet. Uh, this uh, church is not open to the public. Uh, we only have uh, the ministers here serving uh, and everybody else, the members of the church, the faithful members of the church watching over the internet. And for everything that happened in our lives, we must see the glory of God in it. If today God wants us to do church over the internet, let it be. If the service has to be broadcasted over the internet, let it be for the glory of God. Whatever you do in life, you do it for the glory of God. So, you know, there are a lot of pastors out there who are extremely re reluctant when it, when it comes to uh, internet, social media. Now, the, my message is to you is to do it for the glory of God. Not, not saying that you do it, oh, uh, the internet is a wicked place. The internet has uh, a lot of bad people in there. The social media has a lot of bad people in there. You're not, you're not going to do it. No, just continue to do it. Do it now for the glory of God. There, there are bad people. There are wicked people everywhere. That's to include inside the church. So if, if the argument is that you're not going to do it, you're not going to be part of the internet because there are wicked people there, Therefore, you don't need to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ either way. And many people are saying that they don't want to do it because they want people. They want people in the, in, the, in the assembly. They want people in the congregation. You know, they, they want money out of those people. The more people that you have in, in the church, the more money that the more revenue for those pastors. You know, if you genuinely doing it for God, you will do it regardless the people or not. You will do it regardless over the internet or elsewhere. So the message today is to do the work of God wherever you are. Because when Jesus Christ in Matthew 28 verse 18, 19, 20 uh, gives us the instruction to go preach the gospel, uh, he, uh, Jesus Christ didn't give any uh, there is no exemption. They say, oh man, go preach the gospel over there, but uh, don't go over here. It says, preach the gospel everywhere. And that's uh, the unique part of uh, the Lord Almighty. 
is that he sent the apostle Peter to preach to the Jews and the apostle Paul to preach to the Gentiles. So to show you there is no, there is no barrier, there is no obstacle. Preach the gospel everywhere you are. Preach the word of God everywhere without any distraction, without anything that distracting what you're doing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For all of us here right now, I will encourage you to dispose your heart because you will need to shout with joy to the Lord. All the earth, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with uh, thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to Walk by Faith in the National Missionary Church, our web streaming service due to the COVID-19. Today is the last Sunday of the month. Today is our community t-shirt jeans day. So you see us with uh, jeans and t-shirts. You know, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have uh, children's service. We will have uh, the sermon in Revelation, the second chapter from verse 1 through verse 7 in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise the Lord for everything that he has done for us. So, for he is good and he, his unfailing love continues from generation to generation. In the mighty name of the Lord, let us pray. God Almighty, the Holy Spirit is here. Your Holy Spirit is here. God Almighty, wherever someone watching this service, may you send the Holy Spirit to them. May the Holy Spirit touch them. May they uh, spend this time in your glory, in your presence. May they uh, not be distracted by anything in this moment because they are before the Lord. But they are before you, God. You deserve glory. You deserve praise. You deserve worship. Let us see that. Let us understand that. Let us not come before you with our, uh, our wickedness or our wicked mind. But let us come before you with our holiness because you deserve our holiness. In this moment, God Almighty, Turn everything the way you want them to. Let us be the way you want us to be. Change us. Let us be your children in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Merci, Seigneur. Thank you, Lord. God is good all the time. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Angels above 
singing as one. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am. None beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world and hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again. Singing as one, Hallelujah, Holy, Holy, God Almighty, the Great I Am, who is worthy, none beside Thee, God Almighty, the Great I Am. The great I am. The mountains shake before you, the demons run and fear. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power. The great I am, the great I am, yeah, yeah, hallelujah, the holy, holy, God almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside him, God almighty, the great I am, hallelujah, holy, holy, God almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside him, God almighty, the great I am. The great I am. The great I am. The great I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are the great I am. The mountain shake before you. The demons run and fear at the mention of your name. Oh, you are the king of majesty. There is none like you, Father God. There is no one like you. We deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. Glory to your name, Father God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let Jesus be in the center of your life right now. Hallelujah. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Guide till the day is done. 
there's not a friend like the lovely Jesus. No, not one, not one, no, not one. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you for the victory, Father God, you have given us. The victory is belong to us. Hallelujah. stand against the Lord no one can no one will who will stand against the King no one can no one will oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who will stand against a king? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs 
of Jesus We belong to Him oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Yes, we You will deliver. You're a provider. I find my Forever we win I find my victory in you You will deliver your provider I find my victory in you Forever victorious Forever victorious Forever we win Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to Him. There's nothing that's bigger than God. Victory belongs to you. We proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 Hallelujah, victory belongs to Jesus. There's nothing, not cancer, not the virus. Because God gave us the victory over the death. There's nothing that bigger than God. God can do all things. Hallelujah. Lead me to the cross, Father God. Lead us to the cross right now. Hallelujah. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was for my ransom everything I once held dear I count it all as love lead me to the cross where your love poured out bring me to my knees Lord I Myself, I belong to you only. 
Father God, in this world there is temptation, in this world there is loss. The only place, the only place that doesn't have distraction, it's the cross, Father God. Lead us, Father. Lead us home. Lead us. Lead us to your heart. Father God, because our own heart is empty with loss. Without you, Father God, we are nothing. We are nobody without you, Father God. We need your Holy Spirit. We need you more than ever. We are lost without you. We are lost. Oh, thank you, Father God, for this moment. Thank you for the life you have given us. Thank you for this day. We will enjoy it and be glad in it because this is the day you have given us. We thank you. We thank you for the praise and worship. Thank you for using us, Father God. We want to be close to you more than ever. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to share the Word of God with you today. The Word of God in the book of uh, Revelation. The second chapter from verse 1 through verse 7. No, we need the Word of God in this time where we need hope in our lives, but we are living in desperate times. We're living in times of problems, trials, tribulations. We're living in times of great problems, 
great tribulations, talking about uh, wars all over the planet. There's not a place in this world today, there's not a sign of war, whether in Africa, whether in Asia, whether in North America, whether in South America, whether in the Pacific, everywhere in the Middle, Middle East, everywhere there is a signs of wars. And the worst of all, these days, when they're not talking about wars, when they're not talking about conflicts, they're talking about what I but I think it's the biggest threat that I see that happening since, since I was born. The biggest threat that I see, this coronavirus. You know, uh, I'm 50, so the things that happened before me that I may not know that could be bigger than this threat of life or the threat of people's, of humans' life. There's nothing that I know that I can compare. Uh, you cannot compare this to wars because if there is war in Iraq or, or Afghanistan or, or any other place that you can imagine, the, not everybody in the world concerns about that. Not everybody in the world feel like they're in their knees. But this coronavirus put everyone in their knees or on their knees. Not to pray God, not for them to worship God, but they're on their knees because they are afraid. They're on their knees because there is a blink of uncertainty in their lives they're on their knees because the fear of death the fear of death is is big but today i will like to remind you christians that you should not be living your lives like them because you have hope in these difficult times. You have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are on your knees today, you are there as Christians to celebrate God, to worship God, to praise Him. Not to cry because of the disease, the virus, the sickness, all these things going on out there. Yes, this is very popular, but it's not holy. Jesus Christ may not be as popular or as the virus today, but Jesus Christ is holy. So don't be afraid. Don't run after popularity. Let this coronavirus be popular. Let everybody talk about it. But you yourself continue to worship God. You yourself continue to praise God. You yourself continue to show the love of God in every setting in your life. Today we sing those songs, Great I Am. The Lord Almighty is great. He is great in your disparity. He is great in your trials, tribulations, in your economical problem, financial problem. God is great in your problems of fear, depression. God is great. Put God first and you will see the fruit of the promise of his promise. Jesus put him at the center of it all. So if Jesus is at the center of everything, 
That's to include uh, the coronavirus. So Jesus, the second song that they sing is Jesus at the center of, his, of it all. So today, it is an invitation to put Jesus at the center. Put Jesus there. Let Jesus fight for you. Don't let Jesus fight and think that, okay, you stay there. You let, okay, whatever, Jesus, take this and run with it. And then you do, your, you do your own thing. No, when Jesus is fighting, you cling to his robe. Wherever Jesus go, that's where you go. Don't let the coronavirus take you wherever that virus wants to take you. Let Jesus Christ guide you. You are not alone. You are not alone. On this earth, you may feel lonely, but you are not alone because the promise keeper says that he will be with you until the end. So he's not with you yesterday when you loved him, and today you don't love him anymore, and then he said, okay, since you don't love me, you're not, I'm not there. No, he's still there whether you love him or not. Because the victory belongs to Jesus. So if you want victory over the coronavirus today, you need to be in the circle of Jesus Christ. You need to be around Jesus Christ. You need to let him be in the center of your life, at the center of your life. Lead to the cross. The cross is a symbol of victory. Today, if you feel defeated before the coronavirus, I can tell you that Jesus Christ had already defeated death. This coronavirus could be a big thing for kings, for presidents, for prime ministers, for senators, for, for congressmen. But this coronavirus is nothing for God. It's nothing for Jesus Christ. He has gained victory over death. So he will gain victory over this virus. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will win victory over this coronavirus. They say by the time this virus is over, 80% of the world will be affected by it. Now, 100% already affected. There is no, there's no, not a single life in the United States are telling me they're not affected. You're affected by it. Even look at the churches. The church has to broadcast over the internet, over the airwave now limiting the number of people that can be in a congregation by love so that they don't transmit that virus to one another. If a pastor today follow, take this precautionary measure, that is good. That's by love. The many pastors that we say, hey, let's go to church regardless. That's 100, 200 of us gather here together uh, don't worry about it. this is not love so we 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 need to cling to love today the cross like i said is a symbol of victory cling to that symbol cling to the cross the cross of the lord jesus christ we thank god for everyone that i see watching sister delia uh, Sister Dominic, Brother Patrick Delenshear, they're all watching their faithful uh, viewers, faithful, uh, faithfully watching with us today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have some announcement that uh, we would like to uh, say to, uh, to project. So at the end of uh, at, in mid, in about two weeks, two, two weeks, uh, 12 April, 
Well, let's back up a little bit before that 10th April, we'll be having the Good Friday. The Good Friday service will take place. The Good Friday service will take place in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Easter service that Sunday will take place in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing going to stop services. Nothing going to stop us from worship the Lord with those precautionary measures that uh, put in place. Less than 10 people in the church, the ministers will do that, will 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 do that service in the mighty name of the lord for those of you watching over the internet just be faithful don't just come you know uh, for two minutes do whatever you just pick your head and then leave don't do that just stay spend some time with us because it's uh it, it's you you know, the more we, we get together, the more powerful we are spiritually. And we need to build that spiritual movement in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, at the end of this service, we'll be having children ministry. Children ministry today, uh, we have uh, songs, we got prayer, and then we're going to have a, a sermon a sermon that Brother Jonas will deliver today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will encourage you, I will invite you to open your Bibles with me in the second chapter of uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, last week we spent some good time in the first uh, chapter and we see that uh, the, the glory of God in those segments of the Bible uh, this is not something we pick to be in the book of Revelation uh, today, but uh, it, it is in aligning with uh, the study of the Bible that we've been doing since uh, October 2017. So in the book of uh, Revelation, the second chapter, today we will cover verse 1 through verse 7. Jesus' uh, letters to, this, uh, to the churches... Uh, that's uh, this, this chapter starting it, you know, those seven churches. Today we're going to see that first church that uh, the uh, Lord Jesus Christ sent via uh, the apostle, the apostle John. And today that's what we're going to read. We're going to see what, uh, what the letter is about. The letter to the seven churches share a similarity uh, with uh, one another. And it talks about uh, uh, an address to a particular congregation. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a, a letter that was sent out into the air. It's sent to a specific congregation at that time. And today, everything that was sent to that church is, uh, is consistent to this church today, to the church abroad, to the church over the internet. To the church of God. Hallelujah. We will see uh, it is an introduction of Jesus Christ. Who Jesus Christ is. It's a statement of, uh, regarding uh, the condition of the church. This is very important. The condition of the church as Jesus Christ sees it is very important. I can see progress in the church. In, in the church that God uh, uh, bless me to lead. I can see many things going on. But as long as Jesus Christ, uh, uh, if Jesus Christ does not see anything, or uh, I need to follow what Jesus Christ sees, not what I see. So that's what we learn today about all this stuff. We we'll see a command from Jesus Christ to the church. Jesus Christ will talk to the church, whether it's this one or whichever one. When we talk about church, we talk about from the uh, spiritual and from the physical perspective. Spiritual, the church of Jesus Christ is what we uh, cling to. We cling to uh, uh, worship Jesus Christ. 
spiritually. Spend time with uh, the Lord. Do church with the Lord. And physically, as an assembly of, of God, physically, the ones watching over the internet, they're part of this church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A general exhortation to all Christians. We see that in this letter today. We see a promise of reward. Yes, there is a reward of everything that you do on this earth. There is a reward. Guess what? The reward can be a piece, a piece of bread or the reward could be a crown. So, which reward that you want to get of all your work on this earth? You need the reward of uh, having the access to heaven. In the mighty name of the Lord, we can see the state of each of these seven churches. We can uh, today see the state of our own walk with Jesus Christ. By looking at what Jesus Christ has to say to each church in each section that we're going to be learning. Seven sections, seven churches, starting with that first one today. This is the meaning of the mystery of the seven stars you saw in the right hand and the seven gold lampstands that we saw last week defining what the Bible is talking about. He said the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars, they are the angels. Today, the Almighty One is writing, is expressing words to the first star. The first star, which is the first angel, and then from that perspective, that angel will deliver the message to the rest of the church. Now, a lot of people may be talking about what angel is talking about. Is it a spiritual angel or is it a physical angel? I think talking about a physical angel, making it a human. The letter is, is written to a human the angel in this passage refers to a, a, a physical angel, which is a human. And the human that we see in this could be the, the leader of a church, the pastor of the church, somebody in charge that can, uh, that can deliver the message to the people. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So we see stars, the angels, and we see the lampstands, the churches. So today we're going to see from verse 1 through verse, se through verse 7 in the mighty name of the Lord. O oh God Almighty, we are in second chapter of the book of Revelation. We're going to see verse 1 through verse 7. May the word of God come to every ears without any distraction may the word of god comes to every ear with a spirit that will cause everyone to receive it in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ amen amen in verse one we will see the character of the city of ephesus jesus describes describes himself to the church at Ephesus. We see in verse 1, he says, Write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in the right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. We just see the definition of the stars. And then the definition of the lampstand. You know, the, the, the Lord Almighty in that first verse, it gave the instruction to the Apostle John to write the letter 
directly to the angel of the church in Ephesus. The angel of that church, the pastor of that church, uh, write the letter to him and explain him everything that I'm going to be telling you. And everything that I'm going to be telling you to him so that he can uh, express that, deliver that to the rest of the church. So talk to the angel first. You know, the angel in this church at this city, Ephesus. So Ephesus is one of these, uh, if you look at uh, the seven uh, ancient wonders of the world, one of them is in Ephesus. One of them is in that city, that the temple of Artemis. Artemis, that temple, you know, I got so much marvelous things in there. A lot of people in that, in the ancient world, used to go there to visit, to see all this stuff. And there was that Diana, that, uh, that, 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 that uh, what, they, what they call the, that princess. Not Princess Diana of these days. We're talking about Diana of that ancient world where a uh, uh, beautiful uh, lady, like everybody go there to watch that lady, you know, doing things. You know, uh, talking about Ephesus at that time had a lot of wicked, wickedness going on. A lot of things that not of God, a lot of idolatry was going on in Ephesus. Ephesus was a city upside down. There were a lot of carnival, a lot of uh, worship of, 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 of things, of material. A lot of uh, 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 sexual crimes going on. I, mean, I will not say crimes, but sexual uh, desires, sexual, sexual appearance. All this stuff that was going on in that city. There were a lot of things that not of God that was happening. Uh, people were worship other people. There was bad things going on in the in, in that city of Ephesus, and and it's it's um it's in the heart of that city where God planted a church. And the the Bible says that in Acts that uh, the Apostle Paul spent three years at that place. The Bible also explained that uh, the, the the Timothy was there spent time and he had a church over there as well and this is the place that the bible is writing the letter to jesus christ is sending the letter to today you can look at ephesus that city as a city of light just like new york city just like a, a big metropolitan city where you see a lot of things going on you can look at that that city that in the, 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 the letter is written to. But today we talk about church. The letter is, is written to angel of a church, to a pastor of a church. I can receive that letter and then I will share it with you like we're going to do today. In verse 2, you're going to see what Jesus Christ knew. We're going we're gonna to see in that verse, verse 2 and 3, uh, uh, that Jesus Christ is not, is not, is not hidden. Jesus Christ sees everything. Jesus Christ is there. So therefore, if Jesus Christ is not hidden, can we hide from him? No, we cannot hide from the face of Jesus Christ. He says in verse 2, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. That's some good words from the Lord Jesus Christ talking about the angel of that church. Saying that I see what you've been doing. I see how you work hard. I see how you cling to the principle of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see how you share this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the people. I see how you have a lot of wicked people around you. But you do not tolerate them. The Lord Jesus Christ also Talk to the uh, pastor or to the uh, human angel saying that, hey, I see your work. I witness in every goodness, every good things that you do. Your patience, your patient endurance, work hard and endure every suffering, 
endure every pain, everything that comes with it. Finish my, uh, the, at the end of verse 2, he says, You have examined the claim of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. We're still in the book of Revelation, the second chapter in verse 2. Explain that God talks about the good work of the, of the pastor of that church. And God uh, uh, gave him kudos for the good work. And God sees all, how that, that, that angel uh, clang to the word of God. How he examined Everything when, when a false prophet brings forward, he examines that. And he discovers that those false prophets are liars. In verse 3, he says, You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. He talks to that angel. He says that in everything that you do, there's suffering, there's trial, there's tribulation, there's coronavirus, there's a lot of things going on, but you have not given up on me. There are a lot of people in the midst of their trials, problems, of their work with God. They say, yeah, man, this is not for me. I'm not going to continue to uh, worship, uh, praise some thing that I do not see. And then while coronavirus is destroying my family's life, my life, and so forth. Those people quitting, they give up. I've seen pastors that giving up because of the world systems going on out there. They say that you have, to, you have to cling to this, you have to cling to that, you have to tolerate this, you have to tolerate that. And by doing so, by compromising with the worldly systems going on, they're quitting on God, they're giving up on God. They fail to endure patiently, they fail to examine all those claims. They fail to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 4, it says, What Jesus has against the church at Ephesus. You're going to see how Jesus Christ is going to uh, put everything in light. Let them know. The Bible says in verse 4, But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me. Or each other as you did at first. And you see in verse 2 and 3, you see the commendation. You see how Jesus Christ bring them up. Jesus Christ, he's not there to beat, beat, beat. But he's going to come with a balanced subject. He's going to show the good that everyone has done. And at the same time... He's not going to let you go blind in your wicked way. He's going to point them out. And that's what he did in verse 4. That's what Jesus Christ is doing in verse 4. He's saying that, but, there is a but. Whenever you see something, say, and then following by but, everything that was said before, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You can see that verse 2 and verse 2, talking about the hard work, everything that was done. It's irrelevant. Now, let's look at what verse 4 is talking about. Verse 4 is talking about the love of God and the love of one another that is fading away. So when you love God, when you take this hem to Continue to follow him. You need to follow him until the end. Don't give up. Don't quit. When everything goes crazy, do not give up. And that's what Jesus Christ is pointing out. Regardless of all the good the angel or this church was doing in the past. Now there is a present. There is a present that Jesus Christ is pointing out. You don't love me anymore. And you don't love one another anymore. Loving one another could be 
Loving God, first of all, is to stay with him. Is to cling to him. Is to not turn to your wicked way. Is to not give him up. That's loving God. Is to cling to the word of God. Is to follow the word of God without faulting. Loving God is not giving up. Not let Satan be the first person of your life. Not let any circumstance be the first thing in your life. Loving God is surrendering to him. Loving God is obeying him. Loving God is following Jesus Christ. Loving God is carrying your cross. But now Jesus Christ said, you don't love me anymore. You can look at every aspect of your life that caused that Jesus Christ will say something like that. That caused Jesus Christ will discover something like that in your life. You do not love me anymore. And first of all, and most of all, Jesus Christ said, you don't love each other anymore. The people that will give up on one another. If you give up on one another, you don't love God anymore. You must cling to the essence of what we read in 1 John, the fourth chapter, about love. About loving one another. Loving one another, as the Bible explains it, is to bring them to the light. Take them out from where they are. Uh, uh, and pull them away. Uh, Away from wickedness. Tell them, hey, this is the direction of the light. Let's go. You cannot love someone and you see them doing wickedness and then you stay, okay, this is not my business. Let them do whatever they're doing. Me, I'm going to continue to do my... No, if you understand the Bible, you will see that you have a way. You can bring the gospel to them. You cannot change them because the change, only God operates the change. But you can continue to preach the gospel to them. That's love. Loving one another. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. When you first love God, when you love one another, it's a continual process in this life. Continue to love one another. Let's see what Jesus Christ from verse 5 and 6 wants to the church at Ephesus to do. Let's see what, what, what Jesus Christ wants you to do today in those verses. He says, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me. And do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from it, from it place among the churches. But this is not your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. In verse 5, Jesus Christ, plain and simple, tells us what we need to do. We need to return to God. We need to return to the love of God. We need to return and follow that direction of the glory of God. We need to stop sinning. We need to turn back to Jesus Christ because he is the savior of this world. We need to turn back to him and continue to do the works that we started to do. We should never give up. We should never quit. We should continue this way. And this is what Jesus Christ wants us to know today. Look how far you have fallen. When you were doing something good for the Lord and then now... All of a sudden, you start praising the devil. All of a sudden, you start doing something for the devil. You fall pretty deep down. But it's not over because 
the Lord Almighty in verse 5 tells you to turn back. Come back. Come back and then do the right thing. If you do not do the right thing, you see what's going to happen. It's going to take away the blessings that you have in verse 6. Verse 6, it says, this is in your favor. If you do all this, it's in your favor because God knows you. God knows how you hate to do evil deeds. God can examine your heart. He sees where your heart are today. So don't let the devil give you this speech to tell you that you have no future. You have a future in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have hope in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 7 to finish. In verse 7 we're going to see a exhortation to all who hears. Who hear the word of God. To all that have ears to apply everything that they hear. In verse 7 it says, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the, fr from the tree of light in the paradise of God. Hallelujah. Anyone who hears. So if you hear this message today out there. If you are over the internet. You have ears. You listen and you hear. This message. Apply it in your life. Stop the wickedness. Stop the wicked ways. Stop being guided by the spirit of your own desires and your own wisdom be humble humble yourself listen to god's words and apply it in your life listen to everything that will give you victory over the devil and apply it in your life open your ears so that you can hear open your ears wide open so God can talk to you. Don't let any other voices come into your heart to bring distortion. Listen to the word of God. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit. If you do not listen, if you cannot listen to the word or to the voice of God... You're not going to be victorious. And for you to be victorious, you must apply whatever you hear. Today you hear the word of God from verse 1 through verse 7. And verse 1 through verse 7, it gives you the picture of a specific city. A specific city filled with wickedness. But a specific city that a church make a big difference. A church make a big difference and a person on that church, in that church, make a big difference. Today you can be the sole person out there making a difference in your city. You can be a, a, that one person in your house making a difference. You can be that one person making a difference among your friends. You can make a difference. Make a difference for the Lord everywhere you go. Make a lot of people victorious in their lives by sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them. Make someone victorious today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have the song for everyone watching. Everyone over the internet right now, they will be able to spend some time on their knees, praying God as 
we invite every single one of, of you who've been going through some difficult times. You don't know what those difficult times are doing to you, but you know that you need to get out of those difficult times. It is a time to repent. It is a time to walk. I'm not a warrior. I'm not afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to do. Got no excuse Cause what people are Exactly who you are So give me faith Like Daniel And the lion's den Give me hope Like Moses And the wilderness Give me a heart Like David For be my defense So I can face my giants With confidence Took a shepherd boy and made him a king. So I'm gonna trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses. The wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord be my defense So I can face my giants With confidence I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the wall Won't stop until I see him fall I'm Gonna stand up, step up when you call Jesus, Jesus I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the wall won't stop until I see him fall When I stand up, step out when you call Jesus Give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord be my defense So I can face my giants with confidence Hey, give me faith like Daniel In the lion's den Give me hope like Moses In the wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord, be my defense So I can face my giants With confidence I'll face my giants With confidence Amen, hallelujah. Now, I will, hello, church. My name is Jessica, and I will be introducing the children's ministry um, members, Joshua and Jonas, to sing two selected songs. But before we do all that, we, we should pray. Dear Lord Father, thank you for this day you have given us to come here and worship your great name. I pray that you continue to keep every child safe in the U.S. and everywhere, all across the world. In your Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God Almighty. The 
His power in the name, the name of Jesus. Every word He wants, He will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. Victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. The enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good and you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Turn it for good Good afternoon church I'm Brother Jonas I'll be sharing the word of God with you Today We, will, we find the word of God in Joshua 1 verse 5 which says no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live for I will be with you as I was with Moses I will not fail you or abandon you God was with Joshua and he was with Moses in the fight of their lives today there could be many things that are hurting you there could be many problems that are giving you headache there could be coronavirus, but I am here to tell you 
don't be afraid because God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for using Jonas, Brother Jonas, to give us this message. Father God, we thank you. As we are about to leave, Father God, we ask asking for your presence to be with us. Please lead us home while we're driving. We know the same way that you brought us here today. You are able to take us back home safely. Thank you for this week, Father God. Thank you for last week. Thank you for the, everything that happened today. In your name, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God be with you all week, forever. Go in peace. May God be with you all week.